Hey, I am Bogdan from DNN Sharp. It gives me great pleasure to announce a new integration we did for Action Form, and that is integration with Salesforce. So now you have the ability to post data to Salesforce, but also query Salesforce to retrieve data and uh, you do perform other actions using it. But before I go into demoing this fun functionality, uh, let me mention that we are preparing to migrate all these uh, extensions that we have, like Salesforce, MailChimp, Constant Contact, ClickAttel, and so on. We will migrate, it, migrate them to all our other products that support Actions. And here I'm referring to Sharp Scheduler, Action Grid, DNA API Endpoint, which we will release soon, and Redirect tool Toolkit, which we will also uh, rewrite to use the same uh, architecture for Actions. And these uh, extensions will actually be in the same price. So you buy one and you can use it for any or for all of these products. So let's go get back to the demo. First thing that you'll have to do is you'll have to sign up for a developer account. Now, here is a catch. If you sign up for a trial account and then use it to also start a developer account, that will not work. We couldn't get that to work. So it's best, if you don't already have a, an account, to start with a developer account and uh, that's it. This will automatically also create a, um, an account on, on Salesforce. Uh, the reason behind this seems to be with different editions, like uh, if you have uh, the professional Salesforce or if you have the enterprise Salesforce, some allow the API to connect, some don't. So here is what worked for us. First, go to developersalesforce.com and create a new account. Once you are logged in with this new account, you actually have to go to Salesforce. So get out of developer, go to Salesforce, log in on Salesforce. And then, notifications, this is my account. And then once you are logged in, go to my settings personal and reset my security token and here click this button which will send you an email with the security token and this is the process to get the authentication uh, details that are needed for the api so you have the username you have the password and now you have a security token and once you have this we will start with a, a new action form. And we will start with a uh, blank form. And add a few fields. I will add a um, first name. And I will add a last name. And maybe I will add an email. Next, I will add a, a button. I will say uh, maybe uh, download. I will just give the user to download some document. But I want to collect them as leads for this. And to collect them as leads, I will post their information to Salesforce. And here, we have the action to create a Salesforce entity. And here we would put the connection detail that we just uh, retrieved. So the username and the password, and then the security token. And next thing, we have to choose which type of entity we create. Now, we have the basic entities here, like a lead or a case contact account. But if you want to create your own application and entities, just switch to the expression and write here the entity name as it appears in Salesforce. For example, it could be a case or anything else, or it could also come from a, a token. So maybe from a field field, entity type, I could have a drop down and I could say which entity type I want to add, maybe a lead, maybe a contact, maybe a partner, or you can even use my tokens and uh, 
determine this in some other way, for example, from database or from a, from a constant text that is just reusable. Okay, but in this example, I just need a, to post a lead. And then I will have to choose which fields to send. Now you have to be very careful. Some entities are, have required fields. In, in this case, for a lead, I know that they require a list, the last name and a company name. Now I already have a last name and it's a form field. So I will just use its token to get its value. If I didn't put the bracket, it would just pass this string first name, but I need to get the value of the first name field. And then I will have the last name, same thing. I will have the email. And finally, I will have the company. And here I don't have a company field. So I will just write a text here, DNN shop. Now I could store the ID of the newly created entity in a token, let's say lead ID. And I could also store the URL to that entity. So for example, I could redirect to that entity on Salesforce. But I don't want to do this. I would just want to give them something to download and then maybe redirect and I will give them a file to download. And I can choose from the portal file. Let's see if I have some documents here. Yeah. And that's it. Let's save and uh, check how this works. So I will uh, put my name, Bogdan Tesco, Bogdan Tesco at dnnsharp.com. So now I will click the download button and now I am redirected to the PDF file. And that was the purpose. And now let's go back to Salesforce, to the leads page and confirm that the new leads was created. Maybe just click this run reports button. And now you see I have the first le uh, lead in the list is the one that I just added. The rest uh, are probably uh, test test leads that were added when I created my developer account. So now I have the new lead and I al also uh, now let's say that I want to extract this lead at a later time. So I want to build a form that will extract me a lead based on let's say the email address. For this I will go back to the form And I will add a new button to load information. Let's say uh, button load. And in this button, I will just uh, use a um, Salesforce run SOQL query. This is a, a query language built by Salesforce. And here I will have to provide again the same connection details. And next I get to specify the SOQL query, which is very similar to SQL. So I could just write on top of my head, select first name and last name from a leads where ID equals Actually not where I did, where email, email equals, and here I will pass the email field that I have in this form. And then I will just use this action to update form data. So this will pass everything back to the client side and the form field will update. So what I want to do with this is actually have the load button next to the email field. And then I provide an email, I click load, and this will populate the first and last name. This is what I want to achieve. But in order to achieve this, I also need to extract some data. So I run a query and then I need to extract this data into something. And here I will extract it directly in first name and last name fields. So I'll extract first name in the first name and last name in last name. <coughs> And because this is the idea of a form field, 
Action form will automatically populate this data inside the form field with this ID. Let's save, go back and confirm that this works. So what I will do now, just write the email address. And then when I click the load button, this should make a SOQL SOQL request to Salesforce and bring back the first name and last name. And you see they populated here. And that's all the magic uh, that you can leverage and use in an unlimited number of ways. For example, you can use it to synchronize data between local database and Salesforce, or you can use it to um, update information, for example, to post additional data to a lead, or you can use it and uh, to wire multiple entities together. Like you have a company that has contacts, so when you create uh, the contact, you need to get the company ID first and so on. So data is wired together, but you need IDs to link it by ID. And that's pretty much it. You see, you can post data to Salesforce, but also ret retrieve it and do something with it. I hope you find this very useful. Let us know if you need any help on this. Thank you for your time and have a great day.